I will serve you a bowl of tea. Please sit comfortably.
allow me to clear away. I will now show you the vital utensils.
Thank you for your attention. The tea caddy is a piece by Yamada Soul. It is a lacquered piece and it has a motif with gold leaf on it, which has pampas grass over which a goose flies. So there's a goose on top of the lid with the pampas grass on the body of the lid running onto the lid as well. The tea scoop is made from a Japanese wood called Nanten. It's a type of bamboo, but it has these red dots like the ones that I have in my flower arrangement. The scoop has an, uh, a box and also a tube in which it is contained. And its name is given by the abbot of the Hoshunji Temple in the Daitokuji complex, Mr. Noritani Bunga. The name he has given it is Buji. Let's have this as a wish that next year is going to be a better year than this one. It was a pleasure serving your tea. Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining today's online tea ceremony. I'm Tia Sosen, your host today. This tea ceremony is dedicated to Christmas, to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and at the same time also a happy new year. I will introduce to you a few of the uh, items that I've chosen for today's gathering. Let me begin with this rather unorthodox scroll. So the scroll depicts a wall painting, a graffiti painting by graffiti artist Findak. This picture was taken in Brazil. It's a photograph by a person I know who is also a Japanese antique dealer in Kyoto. He's non-Japanese and he very frequently travels to South America to spend time there, travel the country. And at a given point in time, he had the idea to start photographing graffiti art piece on the walls. These graffiti pieces, there's a lot of trash am uh, among them. So they're considered as trash generally. But by capturing them and looking at the pieces that really bring value to our world, to have a message, his idea is to collect these pieces and also bring awareness to the artistry behind them. Now, being a Japanese antique dealer, he also gets his hands on a lot of antique Japanese wares such as scrolls, paintings as well as calligraphic scrolls and some of these pieces they are also considered trash because the mounting might still be fine but the main piece the painting or the calligraphy is not legible or visible anymore so this magnificent idea that he had when he was traveling the road in south america was these pictures that he's taking of these wall paintings they might go well on these beautiful mountings of scrolls that are actually going to be disposed of his idea was to combine something that is considered as trash or something that is not wanted with another thing that is considered as trash or something that is not wanted and putting those two together he creates this new fabulous piece of art. Now today's tea ceremony is in the theme of Christmas and I thought instead of just putting a Christmas tree up or bringing Santa into the room I'd rather look at subtle hints referring to the season, winter, the new year season. What I like to do was to work with the colors, uh, colors green and red. They usually make someone think of Christmas. So here the lady on the far right, she has a red dress and some green makeup. Now the other thing that that I think is very important in this scroll and why it's very important in my Christmas tea gathering today is the fact that I give this scroll the theme Aratameru in Japanese, uh, 
translates as renewal. You have two pieces of trash that are considered as something that is going to be thrown away and we don't want it. But then someone puts those two pieces together and it becomes something that is really wanted, something that has a new value. And I think from this we can, as humans also, learn from that. Sometimes we think we are in such a situation that we're done with, it's over. But then there's a new encounter or you meet someone new, you discover something new, two pieces get put together and a whole new world opens up. This is what I understand under the meaning of renewal, aratamero. There's something that ends, but then there's a new birth. I think there's always opportunity for renewal, rebirth. The new year is always a period of renewal and I think renewal is definitely what we want after the year that everyone has had. For the flowers I went to a nearby park by my house where they have several camellia trees. I recall that among all the pink camellia there was one tree that had white camellia buds. Unfortunately the buds were still green. I chose a rather endearing pink camellia instead. The vase is Bizen. Let me also introduce you to some of the bowls that I've used. This is the bowl that you haven't seen in the Temai. The bowl that I used in the Temai is also a piece by the same artist. He specialized in dead Oribe ware. Usually Oribe ware is green, but according to the firing method, the oxidation in the bronze in the glaze is different and so um, it either turns out green or red and in this case these are red. This one has these cookie-like patterns on the outside with white and red. It could as well be cream or we can look at it as snow. The one that I've used in the Temai has more of a golden shine on the outside and it has chips of broken imari ware dipped into it which makes it look like snow flocks. Now these are two other pieces that I've also used. This one is by an American artist and it very much resembles the shigaraki ware in Japan. This one is red, the other one is more of a green hue. This is also by a non-Japanese artist. This one is from Italy and it's a slightly heavier bowl but sits in the hand very well. So I've used these two bowls as a connection between the west and the east. This is another bowl that is also made by a non-Japanese but this one is made in Japan although with a glaze that is not from Japanese materials. This one is by an, uh, a famous teapotter who is active in Kyoto for already a very long time, Richard Milgram. Uh, many of you might know him as well. He's very well respected in the Urasenke tradition of tea ceremony. He works in various styles, but this one is a glaze that he developed while he was in America. So he stayed in, in America for a while. He developed this glaze while he was there. So this is a uh, Konko glaze tea bowl by Richard Milgram. So a very beautiful bowl. Today's tea caddy is made by a lacquer artist Yamada Soun and it has the motif of a flying goose over branches of pampas grass. This is a very seasonal theme for winter. Then the tea scoop that I've chosen is made from a wood. Usually tea scoops are made from bamboo. This one is made from the Japanese nanten wood. And I've chosen this for two reasons. Nanten can also be written in a different way and interpreted as nan o tenjiru in Japanese. The year is almost over. We're going to brighter times. Everyone has had difficult times this year. We will turn over the difficult, focus on brighter times and overcome the difficulties that we're having, the struggles that we're having at the moment. So nan o tenjiru means to turn the difficulties around and head for better times. The second reason why I chose this is because the name it was given, these scoops are always given names and uh, those are written on the tube and the box in which the tea scoop is kept. Uh, the name of the tea scoop is buji. Buji means there's uh, nothing wrong, everything's all right. Buji as a term is often used around the New Year's as a wish and also an expression of gratitude for the reason that this year we've overcome this safely. And we also wish that next year is going to be another safe year that will also be Buji. The inscription was made by the abbot of a temple in the Daitokuji complex in Kyoto. The temple is Hoshunji and the name of the abbot is Noritani Bunga. And last but not least I want to introduce you to the Mizusashi, the cold water vessel. I kept it in the room during the service also at the end because it's rather large and so I decided to place it there as a permanent Mizusashi. I gave it a lacquered lid 
because it had a lid that was the same as the body giving it the lacquered lid gives it more style and more elegant the reason i chose it for this occasion is it's made in the mishima style the mishima style uses these little stamps that you press on the surface of the soil which which you're working from afar you can see different things in it when i looked at it first i imagined it being the north star lots of north star someone else during the gathering said well it also looks like the pattern on a snow flock it was made by a potter called murakami iku he's active in the uji region so this was my introduction to the different utensils that i've used in today's gathering i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching i wish you a very happy and merry christmas and also a happy new year